Hello, my lovely students. A very warm welcome to all my atoms. I hope you are doing absolutely fine. And I know you must be thinking, ma'am, just we are going to have our pre-boards and it's, you know, going on how to get help in chemistry students. So the most awaited series, that one shot series is there where we are going to take each and every chapter in one shot so that you don't have to see so many videos if you're like done reading a particular chapter and just before exam you wanted to revise in like one hour or so so you can do it right now like in this video with your Anubha ma'am with your AG ma'am so students this is the very first chapter I think you know it already and the topic is periodic properties and variations where we discuss all of the evolution that we had in periodic table and all of the important trends in the periodic table one shot video revision with your AG ma'am starts right now and we'll talk about each and everything which is super important and from the topic where question generally comes it's a revision video so we will do everything on a faster level i think you know that the pace will be a bit faster and you'll cooperate with the same do not forget to like the video share it to your friends and subscribe to the channel for all the upcoming updates and let's start right now give me a quick high five everyone yes okay 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 let's start let's start first of all we'll talk about why there's a need for classification of elements and how the periodic table has evolved this much that we study it with so much ease and comfort and it's very systematic too so the very first thing that why classification of elements was needed everyone because you know it's easy to understand things if they are organized when we go to library everything has a proper section english literature as well as grammar in the same history civics biology chemistry everything was so arranged properly in an orderly arrangement and it's so easy for us to find out everything and so as to go to a supermarket everything was so arranged with a particular store and it's so easy to get all uh, each and every things so uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to elements everyone we really want to have the same kind of ease so that we'll see all of the elements in such a way that it must be easy to understand them and it must be easy to understand their properties too all right so that's why classification is needed because we need an organized arrangement all of the properties which is almost similar in case of all the elements we should group them together these thoughts came to the previous scientist and they approved it and put it in their thoughts in terms of table so let's understand that uh, different different approach of different different scientists more of like history of periodic table how that is evolved with all of these laws you know it in uh, like a quick manner we'll revise it Dobreiner writes new lens law of octaves as well as Mendeleev's periodic table and uh, the last one will be our modern periodic table the most evolved one okay so let's talk about Dobreiner triad the name is giving you answer triad means related to three so what is Dobreiner triad Dobreiner was a German scientist and he told that that at his time around <clears throat> 28 to 30 elements were known and he's like I'll try to arrange element in terms of three elements all together in increasing order of atomic mass in such a way that the middle element must have average property as well as average mass of first and third okay that's what he said you can download the notes it's so like properly arranged the PDF will be available in the comment section I mean in the description box you can download it from there so the very first trait that he gave is lithium sodium potassium li na ki the second chlorine bromine iodine and the third one is calcium strontium and barium these were the three trites given by Dobreiner that was like a, a limitation of his table too that after three trites he is like I am done now even if other scientists really want to do something they can do he couldn't give more than three trites <clears throat> okay and how he arranged the elements in three I mean group of three elements in increasing order of atomic mass in such a way that the middle element must have average mass and average property that's what we got sodium's mass is average of lithium and potassium uh, 39 plus 7 divided by 223 same happened to bromine same happened to strontium the middle element average property average mass but as i said there were so many problems problem number one applicable only for few elements you see that only three tries it does not hold good for very low and very high atomic masses it just valid for very few elements and after that he's like 
I'm done. I'm sorted. You do whatever you want to do. Though they were tried possible, but he couldn't do anything for the same. Now there were one more scientist. His name was Newland. Newland's law of octaves because I think he loved music so much that his uh, law was inspired from music. And he said that as in octave in music, every eighth note is repeated. I'll give a table in such a way that every eighth element written must have the same property like the first one. So there must be a gap of seven elements in between the two elements following the same property. So he's the very first scientist who started grouping the elements together on the basis of their properties. All right, everyone. Yeah, the elements were arranged in the increasing order of their mass too. So yeah, he's like a big fan of music. So in this lithium and potassium, uh, lithium and sodium shows same kind of a property. So as potassium because they are the eighth element with respect to each other and similar kind of a property. Beryllium same property with magnesium and then calcium too. But sadly, the law was valid only up to calcium, only up to lighter elements. That means boron will show the same property with aluminium, but not with the element after calcium at all. Same with carbon. Carbon shows the property with silicon, not with the other elements in the same table because that was valid only up to calcium. So if I show you the table, let me show you a very small part out of the same that is written here. Look at this. Hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, same property because they are coming at 8th position. See, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th. 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th. If I consider that element as the first element, the 8th will be the one that is going to have the same kind of a property. But as I said, only valid up to calcium. So when I talk about the merits and demerits, merit number one provided basis for the classification of elements on the basis of having similar property into groups. All the groups are having similar kind of a property. Periodicity as a property was recognized for the first time. Periodicity means repetition in the property. So that was reported for the first time. He started grouping the elements in terms of their properties and logically based on atomic weight, which was again logical that increasing atomic mass were there but yeah there were drawbacks drawbacks were so many that we had to you know not consider that and have to move on the very first one several elements into the same slot after chlorine here uh, nickel and chromium were uh, nickel and cobalt were uh, you know grouped together at the same slot how come two elements are written at the same slot doesn't make sense because two different elements two different mass two different properties were there in the elements property elements with dissimilar property are also grouped together um, when i talk about the same up to calcium as it worked here there were chromium and chromium were not at all following the property of the same group so it was just valid only up to calcium then there was so much ambiguity into, into the same new elements yet to be discovered could not fit into his table so his table was very precise and even if new elements started uh, getting discovered and they couldn't find any kind of a position in a stable holds true only up to calcium lighter elements discovery of novel gases when was done they could not find any place in a stable too and was disrupting his table so that's not that very good table at all right so all of the problem that we had in octaves table i mean uh, law of octave that was sorted by mendeleev in his table called as Mendeleev's periodic table and he gave us a law as well called as Mendeleev periodic law and that was the property of elements are periodic function of their atomic masses means whenever there is repetition in properties that is happening when we start arranging the elements in terms of atomic mass some of the elements coming together uh, in the terms of same kind of a properties uh, that is grouped together in his table so that was his table having eight groups. What are groups? Vertical columns are called as groups. Vertical columns are called as groups and horizontal rows are called as periods. Okay, so these are periods, right? So you can remember that with this uh, a bit mnemonics as well, HPVG. Harsh Priyam, very generous or uh, Hari Prasad, very generous means horizontal is our period and vertical is our group okay so we had eight groups and seven periods eight groups and seven periods but how he could able to think in that way that hydrogen lithium sodium potassium 
copper, rubidium, cesium, silver, these should group together because he told that my table will be a bit different because I'll start arranging the elements in terms of their common chemical properties too. Group 1, all the elements follow same formula of oxide and same formula of hydride. Okay, so the formula of oxide was R2O, formula of hydride is RH, knowing the valency of R is 1, but that is not something that we should know in detail. <clears throat> okay, so group 1, same formula of oxide and hydride, means he talked about the elements property, chemical properties, chemical behavior too, that these elements follow same kind of a chemical property behavior, so I am going to group all of these elements together. So in that way, we had 8 groups. And eight, eighth group is a group of transition metals, by the way. Transition metals all together. Transition metals are the one uh, that after that sudden transition of uh, non-metal starts coming. And uh, D block elements. The last electron is going into D orbital. All right. And there were so many merits as well as demerit in his table. Let's just know uh, that in detail. Merit number one, he left some blank spaces for elements yet to be discovered. He left some blank spaces for elements yet to be discovered and let me tell you these are the some spaces that were he was like having an intuition after calcium titanium I don't think so because the mass difference is very much and that's not the regular mass difference I'm observing maybe some new element can come and can take that place and he was a big fan of Sanskrit too so he was like let me give some general name when elements will be discovered they get their original name from there. So that's Eka Boron. Eka means one. So it's like one after uh, Boron. And this will be Eka Aluminium because of the same reason. And when I talk about this, this is Eka Silicon. So these are the three elements discovered later. Eka Boron, Eka Aluminium and Eka Silicon. Let me tell you their original name too. Uh, Eka Boron now is called as Scandium SC. You can remember that BSC, Bachelors in Science. Some mnemonics to remember that better. Eka aluminium is gallium, okay, alu gajar, you can remember in that way, more of like vegetable market, sabzi market. And Eka silicon is, Eka silicon is germanium, Sita G, okay, Sima G, giving respect to someone, you can use this uh, in your uh, memory so that it will be stored for a longer time. Next, corrected the atomic mass of some of the elements like gold, platinum, even barium, so many mass were written wrong and he corrected it as well. But yeah, there were demerits also, like position of hydrogen is still a problem. He wrote hydrogen over here, though hydrogen properties matching with group 1 as well as group 7, which is a group of non-metals, showing the property of non-metals as well. <clears throat> Apart from that, increase in atomic mass is not regular. In what sense? Uh, you see this cobalt and nickel. Cobalt is written before then nickel. Though it has more mass, it has less mass. So increasing atomic mass is not following properly. No explanation for the cause of periodicity. That why that happened that you are grouping the elements together that they are having same property. So he was correct but yeah partially correct. So these were the table that was more of like history. From now on we will start modern periodic table which is the most important for your syllabus. But before that, I really want to know that if all of you really want to gain 100% knowledge, that much confidence that you all can do it. And yeah, can score a very good marks and can see a lot of improvement in yourself. You have a chance to be a part of Vedantu, where all of the classes will be uh, with so much of fun quizzes, high level quizzes, unlimited live classes you will be able to attend, uh, depending totally on your schedule, what you want. It's like students friendly uh, website, students friendly team we are having. Compete with students throughout the world and can see your name in the leaderboard because of the same interactive replays. Even if you miss any session, it's like as fresh for you that it's a live session and live quizzes and leaderboards to enhance your growth, to see and maintain a healthy competition and an active kind of a learning too. Premium down downloadable content also with handwritten notes of master teachers will be available for you everyone. In class doubt solving with quality tests and assignments and with the help of your master teachers and a team of class teachers, chemistry, biology, whatever that class is, those experts only to help you to solve each and every doubts. And right now you can have 5000 plus micro courses. There are so many micro courses available, chapter based courses and you can attend as many as you want. If you have problem in particular chapter, you can also study that 
500 times whatever you want free crash courses right now crash courses has started everyone and in three months we'll make sure all of your revision will be done with all the most important questions as well so that you can see a very good boost and uh, a jump in your current store uh, current score and your confidence so students it's like a new way we will say that less is more because less surprise you will get so many classes like up to 200 classes also you can attend in a month so there is a link in the description box all you have to do is to uh, click on the link select your target select your grade and then you can apply the code AGE Pro because that will give you discount from 20 to 31 to 43 percent because if you give AGE Pro as a code the price will decrease to 2159 for a month for three months 5599 and six months 9199 it's like paying just as low as 11 rupees for a session for one month nine rupees per session for uh, three months and eight rupees per session for six months more and more time you are going to spend lesser and lesser price you have to pay but i think the ideal one is this owing to the time that we are left with all right for all the revision so students you know it's as less than a packet of chips so you can decide because personal investment is the best investment anyone can have so do not forget that and we'll move ahead right now with the very important topic that's modern periodic table and please remember that i didn't say modern periodic table was given by henry mosley he gave a very important law to all of you and that's modern periodic law and uh, he discovered a concept of atomic number and then he told that this is the best that we can have and we will try to arrange the elements on the basis of atomic number. The property of elements are periodic function of the atomic number. That's what the modern periodic law that the properties repetition in the properties of the elements will be only going to happen because they are going to have same kind of a electronic configuration and that totally depends upon atomic number that represent number of protons more of like a fundamental property of each and every element no two elements can never have the same atomic number so uh, there will be no repetition in the entire periodic table and it will make much more sense then so yeah that's one that we are going to choose Niels Bohr and Burry gave the long form of periodic table Niels Bohr is the one that prepared the long form of periodic table basically and let me show you what his table was and we'll study that in detail that's the table that we study now on the best one that we had very few drawbacks it's still having but yeah we can bear with that until it's totally going to be resolved you see there are 18 groups into the same 1 2 3 4 and up to 18 and there are 7 periods 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then this is like 7 okay uh, this is not a seven basically this is some elements missing from the sixth period and seventh period if you look here and here so these were written here okay so in the modern periodic table we have 18 vertical columns and seven horizontal row so seven periods and 18 groups so let's talk about all the features of modern periodic table and the periodicity in properties and trends also how the properties can change okay everyone so as I said, Henry Mosley is the one who proposed the concept of atomic number. That's the fundamental property of any element. That's how we should arrange. And look at this. When I say that elements are placed in periods, that is totally based on the number of shell in their atoms. That means how we can decide the period number every one. Period number we are able to decide due to the number of shells the element is going to have. Suppose I'm talking about lithium configuration is 2, 1. That means that uh, their electrons are there in, in total two shell. So last electron is going to second shell means their position in the modern periodic table is second period. And second period, where in second period? Uh, every period starts with the very first element having one balance electron. The number of electron increases because atomic number always increases by one. So lithium in the very starting having one balance electron. So period number is the one that decides the number of shell. I hope this point is pretty clear. How to find period of an element. How to find group of an element. And uh, that's the best part of this modern periodic table. That every group has same number of valence electron. So valence electron is the key that decides the group number. And also responsible for same kind of a chemical behavior periodicity in the properties. Valence electron how? If your valence electron is... Uh, lesser than or equal to 2 or I must say if valence electron is up to 2 
that decides the group number two. Group number is equal to valence electron. But if your valence electron is more than two, your group number will be 10 plus valence electron. But please remember that's valid only in 10th class because we are studying, we are not studying the concept of orbital in that level. So when that will be clear in 11th class, there will be configuration in terms of SPDF orbitals and then you will get a proper way how to calculate the valence electron in that term. Right now you can follow that. Group 1, 1 valence electron. Group 2, 2 valence electron. Group 13, 3 valence electron. Uh, group 14, 4 valence electron. Group 15, 5 valence electron and all. So like ma'am, where is 3 to 12? 3 to 12 is something that we do not need to know in 10th class. That's a D block family. The last electron in D, transition elements. That's something that we do not need to study. So this rule is valid up to 1 to 2 and 13 to 18 group. 1 to 2 is your S block, 13 to 18 is your P block. That's something that you should know. So what's the significance of period? These horizontal row, row of chemical elements have the same number of electron shell. If I talk about a particular period, suppose second period, that totally means all of the elements present in second period is going to have only two shells. All right, each element in period has one more proton and is less metallic than its predecessor. So when I talk about suppose lithium, beryllium, boron, whenever we move to the next and next element, they, it's like increasing atomic number, atomic number always increase by one. So it's like two, one, two, 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 three, valence electron always increases by one and metallic character is somewhat uh, decreasing because more and more shells are going, uh, more and more electron are going to add into the last shell. Okay, more and more electron, less and less tendency, I mean, less tendency to lose that metallic character decreases. Okay, now let's talk about the significance of group in periodic table. As I said, each vertical column is your group and the elements in each group have the same number of electron. That's how same type of a chemical behavior. That's the property of group. That's what the periodicity we observe in the group. Okay, and uh, totally valence electron is the one that is able and that's helping us to decide the group number. Let's take the example of sodium and uh, lithium. Sodium's configuration 281, lithium configuration 21. We can see that same type of valence electron, same group number, that's group number one. All right. So right now, let's talk about all the key points about modern periodic table, what you should know in detail. That's important. That's helping us to decide the trends in the periodic table. Just remember this trend. You know that when we talk about all the horizontal row where all the elements are written, we should know which period is going to have how many elements. So remember this, 2, 8, 8, 18, 18, 32, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the seventh period is still incomplete. So please remember, this is very easy, 2, 8, 8, 18, 18, 32, these are the number of elements that every period is having. First, two, uh, two elements are hydrogen and helium. Uh, second, eight elements are from lithium to neon. Uh, third period, sodium to argon. Fourth period starts from potassium and, and so on. That's going to end somewhere. Uh, last element will be the noble gas. Okay, so this is written second period, third period, as I told. Let's talk about the group which is important. As I said, maximum importance is up to 20 atomic number where they have been placed in the periodic table, their period number and group number. Group number one is alkali metal. Alkali means something that makes water soluble bases. That's what they do. How to remember this group? Hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, tritium. You can remember that in this way in English because that's, you know, our English channel. Highly nasty kids rub cats fur. Okay. Highly nasty kids rub cats fur. <clears throat> Second group is alkaline earth metal alkaline because they are, they are going to make water soluble base too. But as we move to the next and next group, my metallic character decreases. So less metallic and also less basic. Less metallic means less basic as well. So uh, group two less basic than the group one. And earth metal because mainly we get most of their elements from the earth crust. Yeah. Beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and radium. How to remember that uh, this group with the help of mnemonics. Bearded muggles, bearded muggles, Harry Potter fans, came straight back rapidly. Bearded muggles came straight back rapidly. All right, everyone. 
3 to 12 as told by NAMS transition elements. Why we call them transition? Because uh, before that there are metals and after that suddenly non-metal starts. So there is a sudden transition. They are occurring for transition elements. Also D block family. See that very important elements that you know till now nickel, copper, zinc, cobalt, iron, chromium, manganese, even your silver, gold, mercury, they all belong to D block, quite important group this is, but you will understand that in 11th and 12th class. Group 13, three valence electron, the first element we will call by that name, boron family, how to remember this? Just remember a very famous brand, Bagot, and you can remember that, Bagot, and that is boron, aluminium, gallium, indium, thallium. All right, group 14 is your carbon family as first element is carbon, uh, carbon, silicon, germanium, uh, tin and your lead. How to remember that? It's like cute sister get small problem. Okay, 114 is something that you do not need to remember because our last period is the one carrying radioactive elements and not stable at all. So we do not study that that much, right? Group 15 is uh, the family of nitrogen because all of the members somewhat follows the property of nitrogen. We also call it nictogen, P silent. Nictogen something that's creating, nicto means chalking, gen means generator, that creates chalking gas, okay. So nitrogen gives ammonia, phosphorus gives phosphine kind of chalking gas to us. And the family is nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony and then bismuth, how to remember that? New police assigned sub-inspector Bikram Singh. Yeah, new police assign sub-inspector Bikram Singh. Sixteenth group is the family of oxygen and also called as chalcogens. Chalco means uh, ore, gen means generator. Ore generator, they give ore. You know that generally ore exists in the form of oxide and sulfide. That's the reason. Oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium and polonium. And how to remember that in uh, English, this whole uh, group. You can remember that O. Oh, Seema send the post. O oh, Seema send the post. Okay. And halogens, quite important group, very important group, I must say. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatin. How to remember that? Halo means salt, gen means generator. Salt generator, they make salt with the metal. Sodium chloride, sodium bromide, sodium iodide, and so on. And to remember that, fat Clyde bribed innocent Arthur. Fat Clyde bribed innocent Arthur. That can help, yeah. Group 18 is a group of noble gas, also called as zero group, because they show zero valency. Though eight valence electron, seven valence electron. You can see the last digit that decided in the group number of this particular 13 to 18 family. We call this as zero group because zero valency, noble gas, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon. How to remember that in English, like mnemonics. He needs R, he needs R, crazy Xerox repairman, okay, he needs our crazy Xerox repairman, this will work, right, so what are the demerits of this modern periodic table, why this is like best till now, because classification is best based on the atomic number, which is like more fundamental property and makes sense, because isotopes problem is solved, element is not going to repeat, because they have more than one type of uh, masses, the same element, yeah, because we are placing them at one position like chlorine 35 37 but we are just writing chlorine by taking their average mass regarding to its abundance taken into consideration also it explains the periodicity of property because if we know the atomic number we can know the electronic configuration and can tell about the position of the uh, element in the periodic table configuration will help us to decide the valence electron and to decide the chemical properties also Apart from that, lanthanoid and oct actinoids are placed separately at the bottom of periodic table called as F block. F block. Okay. Why? Because they were the members of 6th and 7th period but entirely having different property from the D block from where they have extracted. Every uh, series is having 14, 14 elements. F block because F is having a capacity to have 14 electrons. So as 14 protons. So lanthanoid 14, actinoid 14 members. Lanthanoid we call lanthanoid because first element is lanthanum. Actinoid the first element is actinum and all of the members follow the property with the lanthanum and actinum. Alright, 
that separate differently because uh, they were also called as inner transition element inner side of transition elements follow different properties so got the different position yeah so our table is more of like having metals than the non metals non metals are very less still there are problems in the modern periodic table like position of hydrogen is still not fixed that's something that we kept in hydrogen in the very first group but why not group 17 though that's also having the property like group 17 which is having seven valence electron and they have a tendency to gain one electron hydrogen has, has the same tendency to gain one electron right and hydrogen also has same tendency like group one alkali metals to lose one electron very versatile and the problem is which is not a very big problem but yeah lanthanoid and actinoid have not been placed with the main body of the table and placed separately because it just uh, doesn't look nice by having that very staggered kind of a table yeah got it everyone and apart from that there are very teeny tiny things that you should know what is bridge elements and this diagonal relationship so in your period number two and three there are some elements that shows this bridge relationship means uh, period number two will show the property will show the same kind of a property of period third element that is in that bridge term to each other in in that bridging position to each other element of the second period shows resemblance in property with the elements of the next group of the third period leading to the diagonal relationship you must be having this thing in your mind that ma'am why they are having same kind of a property because students they are somewhat going to have same kind of a size atomic size lithium starts the very first element in the table so the very first element in the every period is having more size size decreases in the period okay we'll explain that in detail also size decreases in the period and size increasing in the group so this group third is having more size than the group uh, two but when i talk about this when we move in a period also size decreases so they are saying yeah here size decreasing but more size than the previous uh, period also lithium magnesium somewhat same size beryllium aluminium somewhat same size boron silicon somewhat same size due to this average thing size decreases uh, size increasing okay lithium magnesium quite comparatively i must say a bit hard than the rest of the elements beryllium aluminium both act as lewis acid because lewis acid are the one that can gain electron that except pair of electrons boron silicon semiconductor properties so some of the property matches so these are your uh, elements bridge elements all right everyone so i hope till now this topic of periodicity is pretty much clear periodicity refers to the trends for recurring variations in elements properties with increasing atomic number when we try to arrange elements in the terms of increasing atomic number what do we see periodicity repetition re uh, reoccurrence in the property those elements which will come together in a group shows periodicity so the main reason is having same kind of electronic configuration that we observe in each and every group yeah so that's pr pretty clear now as periodic table pretty much makes sense to all of you this is the time to know about the very important topic that is to know about the periodic properties of element in detail how atomics radius ionization energy electron affinity electron negativity and metallic and non-metallic character changes in a period are in a group so are you all ready let's not wait anymore this is it let's talk about first of all what is atomic size atomic size is like nothing a big thing that's the distance between the center of the nucleus to the outermost shell in which electron is there of an isolated atom because atom must be free so there are so many way to calculate atomic radius but they have a particular name also when we talk about atomic radius i am talking about the size of an atom single atom so i need to isolate that atom and i'll observe the size by measuring the distance between the center of the nucleus to the outermost shell in which electron is there all right everyone and there's one more way when atoms are in that uh, uh, bonding form when they make this covalent bonding covalent bonding is due to sharing of electron and they overlap each other then how to calculate the rate uh, size and that we called as covalent radius so how to calculate covalent radius everyone you observe the distance between the nucleus of the two atoms and that's called as d 
distance and we also call it as bond length. This is the distance between the bond that is the force of attraction between two atoms. So we'll do this d by 2, half of this. So like this. This will observe the size, the radius of a particular atom. Covalent radius. But did you observe? We were hoping the entire atomic radius to the end in which last electron is there. But when the atoms are overlapping, the resultant size is comparatively less. We were hoping till now here, but this is here due to overlapping. So covalent radius is somewhat less than your atomic radius. Somewhat that is having a free atom. Okay, free atom is having more size and you know that your, co, uh, your uh, noble gases are the one that are present in the nature as a free atom. They won't react. Covalent like your fluorine exists in the form of F2 like Cl2 and all halogens. Yeah, so their size will be a bit less, could be a bit less than your noble gases respectively. Yeah, important thing. But to know all the properties, I must say there are two things I really want to tell you which will help you to talk about each and every uh, trends in a very easy way. One is number of shell. The second is effective nuclear charge. So we'll talk about that right away. Along the period mean, going from left to right in the table, we say size decreases, but how? Let's just talk about that. And I'll tell you how do they affect your atomic size. One is number of shell, number of shell or number of shells. Second thing is my effective nuclear charge all right effective nuclear charge yeah number of shell that means that this is something that's pretty evident if number of shells increasing number of orbit increasing in which the last electron is there definitely size increasing so that's the main factor effective nuclear charge is your charge on the nucleus so though there is a bit more uh, you know definition there is Something more in this definition, but that you'll understand in 11th class. Effective nuclear charge, charge on your nucleus. And you know that when we move in a period, charge on the nucleus increasing because every time one extra proton is going to the nucleus, right? I hope it's obvious. Atomic number 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and so on. Atomic number represent number of proton and every time one extra proton will come. So effective nuclear charge increasing means your nucleus is having more and more proton means becoming more and more stronger and you know that opposite attract so positive can attract negative so your nucleus being more powerful can attract electron can attract negative charge and then size decreasing so remember this thing i'm writing two things that will help you like trends and uh, this is my atomic size is directly proportional to number of shells more and more shells more and more size less and less shell less and less size directly proportional and my atomic size is inversely proportional to my effective nuclear charge more and more charge on the nucleus more and more strong your nucleus will become more and more pull they'll show towards electron and less and less size it will show you all right everyone so that's what we observe when we move in a period plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 uh, charge on the nucleus increasing because number of shell remains same that's not the factor that will be the decidable one so more and more proton more and more positive charge more and more pull towards electron and size decreasing that's what we see in the next period too so do remember that group one is the one in every period going to have maximum size and here the size will be minimum all right size decreasing in a period and when we talk about a group the main factor is always number of shell but that was not valid into the period but in group it's so evident that in a group number of shell increasing so size always increase let me under let me make you understand with the help of taking some of the example look at this configuration 2 1 281, this is group 1, 2881, 281881, and 2818881. 8, more and more shells increasing, more and more size. I told you directly proportional. So that's the conclusion that we observe, right everyone? That size decrease here, size increase here. Yeah? And you can download these notes as well. Awesome. Size increase on this side 
size increase on this side. All right. Okay. Now we should know the size of ions also. But let me just tell you what exactly is an ion. Ion is an atom or group of atom carrying a charge, either positive or negative. You know that positive charge is keta and negative charge is anion. Positive, how to remember? Cat has pause, means ketine is positive. If you have any confusion, anion is negative. Any, anion is negative. All right? So there should be no confusion. When an element make ketine, means it will lose electron. Let's just take this example. 281, this is my sodium. It loses its electron just to get stable because to follow octet rule. So what will happen when an atom lose electron? They get a positive charge. The reason is here, 11 positive, 11 proton, 11 negative, 11 electron. Positive nuclear uh, nucleus has proton that will never change because that can't be lost, gain and shared. But electron became comparatively less. So look at this ratio and look at this ratio. So what will happen when a neutral atom is converting to cation? They are having less electron as compared to proton. Means more proton means proton is comparatively stronger. Stronger uh, nucleus will pull the electron more tightly. So size will decrease. Okay. A cation is always smaller in size than your respective neutral atom. And anion, when we compare anion, let me take an example. Negative charge. Chlorine's configuration is 287, 17 proton, 17 electron. Chlorine accepted an electron to feel stable to follow octet. Proton is still the same, will never change, but electron became extra. Now look at this thing. When electron became extra as compared to proton, proton became a bit weaker. I have to handle extra electron. So what proton will do, will say, I can't handle extra electron. I can't pull that strongly the extra electron. So no strong pull means size is comparatively more. So when I talk about the anion, size is always more. When I talk about the cation, size is always less. Okay. Do remember these two points. And for the same, uh, we'll talk about a particular example. Look at this lithium, what it convert. Cation, smaller in size. Look at the anion, what it will become comparatively larger in size. So remember this. All right, everyone. And when I talk about the trend, trend will always remain same. Atomic radius is the size also. So along the period decreases, along the group increases. That's the same. All right. Yeah. Let's talk about ionic radius. That's done. We'll move ahead with talking more and more trends, which is very much important to know. Let's talk about this factor, which is very much important. That is ionization energy. Name is giving you some idea. Ionization energy. Converting into ions. And we are talking about the positive one. So that's the minimum amount of energy required to remove an electron from outermost shell of an isolated gaseous atom. Why this term is important? Isolated gaseous atom. Because uh, first, when we need to observe what is the amount of energy released for a single atom. Okay. To convert that into a single atom, what we will be do, generally metals in solid form, we will heat it to that extent that will give you a gas, gas free atom almost and then we will take it and observe the ionization energy. Suppose I am talking about sodium, if that is in solid, we will provide enough heat so that we will get the gaseous sodium atom. Almost free, now I have my sodium atom, configuration 281. Now what I want to know that how much energy is needed to remove this electron from the last shell of the sodium atom. That was the ionization energy. And somewhat you are understanding the two factor always work. Effective nuclear charge, number of shell. If you see that, more and more nuclear charge, more and more strong nucleus, uh, more and more pull it will show towards electron and won't let the electron go easily. If the electron will not go easily, we will need to give more and more energy to lose it. That means when effective nuclear charge is increasing, we have to give more and more ionization energy to lose the electron. So what I will write, my ionization energy is directly proportional to effective nuclear charge. More and more charge, more and more energy is required to lose it. That means, you know, that in a period, my effective nuclear charge increasing, that's why my ionization energy also increasing. Yeah, while going and when I talk about while going down, we'll discuss that. So here, ionization energy 
increasing. Suppose I'm talking about here I'm having sodium, here uh, chlorine, why not argon, noble gas, we will not do that. So sodium to lose an electron it's very easy, for chlorine to lose an electron it's very difficult, more ionization energy, less ionization energy. But when I talk about a particular group, suppose I'm talking about group 1 also, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, though we'll try not to uh, include my radioactive element because they are not stable. Now you see more and more shell is increasing. Uh, that means my nucleus is nucleus and the last electron is very far to each other. That electron can easily go means less energy is needed for the same. So I can also conclude ionization energy is inversely proportional to number of shell. More and more shell, less and less ionization energy is needed. It's working on the opposite way, the way my atomic size was working. So this will always help whatever I'm saying. You can write some bullet points, short points that will help you to understand that better. That means if I talk about cesium, uh, it will have lowest ionization energy in the entire periodic table. And uh, fluorine is the one maximum ionization energy in this table. All right, look at this. That's why it's here. Maximum and here is the lowest. That's what they are telling about ionization energy. Yeah. What's electron affinity? Affinity word is giving you the idea. Affinity means your affection towards something. Electron means affection towards electron, love towards electron. That means there's nothing but the tendency to gain electron to your outermost shell. And when I have to explain in terms of energy, please understand uh, when an extra electron is added to the last shell, that means at that time energy is releasing. Why energy is going to release everyone? Because if an atom has to gain electron with a very high affinity, that might be very much reactive, that might be not that stable and having very much, you know, acceptance towards the upcoming electron. So it's like I'm very reactive. As soon as I'll get that electron, I'll be very stable. So from a very reactive state, it will come to a very stable state, ground state. So reactive, very high energy, stable, very low energy, and that extra energy is going to be released. Yeah. So that's what your uh, electron gain enthalpy also. Electron gain enthalpy. Enthalpy energy. Energy that's going to be released when an extra electron is going to be added to the outermost shell of an isolated atom. Why isolated? Again, because we'll talk about a particular atom, what energy is going to loss or gain. All right, so that's what affinity and love towards electron. And look at this. Oxygen took that electron and releases the energy 140 kilojoule. Okay, everyone? And generally, we try to show a negative sign also uh, before energy and a positive. Negative sign is basically telling about the exothermic process that the energy is going to be released. Positive sign is telling about the uh, process that this much energy is needed and absorbed. Endothermic. All right, that you should know. Energy is absorbed, energy is released. So from left to right, electron affinity, love towards electron, affection towards electron definitely going to increase. More and more tendency to gain electron, that must be very much reactive, that as soon as I get one, I'll be very much stable. So from a very reactive, very much stable, more and more energy is released. So that will work in the same way, just like my ionization energy was working, that from left to right, my... Uh, electron affinity is going to increase. My electron affinity is going to increase. My love towards electron increasing. And you know that, let me even take a particular period for you. 281, 282, 283, finally 287. Uh, more and more tendency to gain electron. More and more electron affinity. More and more release of energy will be there. And uh, same like ionization energy as I told. Electron affinity down, uh, electron affinity down the group is definitely going to decrease. Because more and more number of shells are there, even when the electron is going to add it, nucleus doesn't care much and won't show that much attraction. So at that time, it won't, uh, you know, accept it with a very much uh, ease and very much power that as soon as I'll accept it, I'll be very much stable. It's very far. Even when it's added, it doesn't care that much. So amount of energy release will be decreasing. So it's the same trend. That's what we observe the ionize, in the case of ionization energy. Look at this. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, 287, 287, 
18, 18, 7, more and more number of shell, less and less tendency to gain electron, less and less electron affinity. Look at this value, 340, 360, 4, 342, and 314. What you are observing, as we are going down, electron affinity is going to increase. With the one exception that you see, we were expecting decrease in electron affinity, right? That means fluorine must be showing maximum electron affinity, but that's not true. In the case of fluorine and chlorine, everyone, my chlorine is the one that will show the maximum electron affinity. The same case happens in the group of oxygen family. My sulfur will show more electron affinity uh, than my oxygen. Let me tell you, oxygen, sulfur, fluorine, chlorine. And what exactly is the reason? I'll explain that too. 27 to its uh, 7. Yeah. So what exactly is happening in these two cases, everyone? That's the tendency to gain electron. The only problem is here, electron is supposed to be gained to the second shell. Here also, second shell. All right. And in the case of sulfur and chlorine, electron is going to the third shell. The thing is, the second shell is already carrying your 6 or 7 electron very much crowded. When the electron has to be added, the resultant electron is going to repel the upcoming electron a bit because of more number of electron in the very tiny shell. Tiny shell having more electron, so whenever an electron really wanted to come, it will repel it. But in the case of third shell, comparatively bigger in size and having a capacity of 18 electron, so comparatively bigger in size and they are scattered at a very far, far distance. So when even the electron will come, they have more tendency to be attracted by the nucleus and will be showing a negligible repulsion to each other. So in the case, there is a small exception. Chlorine and sulfur will show more electron affinity in their respective group than the oxygen and fluorine. And the question can come from the same and you should know that. All right. So this is pretty much clear. That's what the electron affinity is written in a period increases in a group decreases same as I, uh, ionization energy all right let's talk about this very important one that's electron negativity electron negativity is the property of a molecule the last topic is electron affinity that was a property of a single atom electron negativity on the other hand uh, on the other hand is the property of a molecule covalent molecule just like suppose hcl h uh, F hydrogen fluoride when a covalent bond is formed between two atoms that is due to sharing of electron and when any one of the atom has more tendency to attract these shared pair of electron when these electron will be more attracted by one of the atom we will observe a bit of charge separation polarity is going to come in your molecule molecule will become polar polar so slight positive slight negative why Electrons are being pushed more towards chlorine and from the hydrogen it's going a bit away like this. So it's going away slight positive, not complete positive, complete negative. That's the property of ionic compound. Proper electron transfer. It's just pushing the electron and towards chlorine slight negative. And what's, what we are getting? Polarity in my substance. Polar, uh, polar charge means charge separation. And what's the trend? From left to right, electronegativity increases, tendency to gain electron, tendency to attract electron increases. Down the group, tendency to gain electron decreasing. Very much obvious. And that's definitely we can see with the help of nuclear charge. Look at this. Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. This is the nuclear charge that we observe. Right, everyone? And electron are going into the same shell, that second shell, because that's the second period. So in the case of fluorine, we see at the last maximum positive your nucleus is maximum uh, nuclear charge. So tendency to attract the upcoming electron is more because of more and more stronger nucleuses. It will attract the electron more and more. And also it's having minimum size. So electron will show the attraction. Uh, electron will be attracted more by the nucleus because of small size, very close. Yeah. So in a period it uh, increases in a group it decreases in a group let me tell you ex i'm explaining why because as i said fluorine group is the one that's showing maximum electronegativity fluorine family 
because they need to accept only one electron they need to just have that one electron but what is happening when we move down number of shell increases my nucleus is going far and far away from the nucleus so tendency to attract the upcoming electron is somewhat decreasing because nucleus is not able to attract it very strongly so fluorine is the one fluorine is the one maximum electronegative maximum electronegative in the entire table in the entire table please do remember that all right everyone quite easy so that's what electronegativity increases here maximum decreases here minimum they are more of like electropositive not at all electronegative yeah everyone okay this is somewhat related to the previous uh, only and not at all difficult what is metallic and non metallic character everyone metallic character is nothing but the tendency of an element to donate electron in a chemical reaction and it's simply telling about the ease with an element can lose electron can donate electron and make a chemical bond metallic character tendency of an element to lose electron and to and to give it to the other element so that a chemical bond can be formed between two atoms okay and non metallic character is just opposite of the previous one that is the tendency to gain electron and uh, that is something that was given by an atom which is more of electro positive in nature yeah so they works in an opposite way so when we talk about the trends metallic character is somewhat that is going to decrease in a period so non metallic character is going to increase and vice versa let's see that it's written also uh, metallic property decreases because extra proton is going to add in the nucleus that will pull the electrons more and more strongly so not going to uh, lose easily let's take the help of the sodium uh, period sodium uh, magnesium aluminum silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine why i'm not taking halogen i mean uh, uh, zero group family member you know that well 282 283 284 285 286 287 and you see that that's a tendency to lose electron one electron can be lost easily two a bit difficult three more difficult four five six seven electrons won't be uh, able to lose easily tremendous amount of energy is required which is not a good possible decision and now one more way to explain that my nucleus is getting more and more positive my nuclear charge is getting increase my nucleus getting strong means get pulling my electron strongly won't able to lose that so metallic character decreases yeah on the other side in a group number of shell increasing that means there is a fair distance between the nucleus and the last shell so the tendency to lose the electron is somewhat increasing so here when i talk about cesium will be the one that's maximum metallic maximum metallic and here uh when i talk about fluorine fluorine is here in the period 2 maximum non metallic because if metallic character decreases non metallic character increases because what is non metallic character tendency to pull the electron minimum size of the group 17 family in the respective period minimum size and also maximum tendency to gain an electron as soon as they'll gain it they'll be very much stable so uh, non metal character is somewhat going to get increasing so uh, halogen family is the one that will show maximum non metallic character halogen family halogen family uh, will show maximum non metallic character and when i talk about halogen family also which will be the member that will show maximum non metallic character non metallic character Uh, decreases in a group and uh, metallic character increases in a group fluorine chlorine bromine iodine as i say number of shell is going to get increases 28187281887 more and more number of shell increases nucleus far away from the last shell tendency to gain electron decreases yeah fluorine maximum non metallic maximum non metallic okay cesium maximum metallic as said by metal uh, as said by ma'am so look at this entire table most of the table is having metals and very few we have non metals 
my group 1 to light metals my 3 to 12 is a group of heavy metals when i talk about 13 to 18 13 is also metals these uh, these are some of the members non metals this is also my uh, heavy metals transition metals all right everyone so i'm left with very few non metals and there are some bridge elements when metal finishes non metal start, uh, starts some of the metals some of the elements are going to show bridge properties and also shows metalloid behavior so my boron my silicon my arsenic my uh, antimony my tellurium my polonium these are the members that are metalloids in nature yeah so metallic property increases down the group non-metallic decreases down the group so i hope all of these properties are pretty much clear i'll ask a question so that i'll see your responses how much you're you know learning properly uh, nature of oxide nature of oxide like basic nature or acidic nature in a period and uh, basic nature and acidic nature in a group that is something that you guys need to tell me in the comment section and with this i have attached all the summary slides where just by downloading the notes you can revise it again as well and see the replay whenever you want so students finally most important chapter with all the problems is sorted now i hope you are very happy too and again as i told you vedantu is a very good platform to interact with the teachers master teachers class teachers to solve your doubts instantly with the help of quizzes like active learning have a healthy competition with all the students throughout the world so students interactive replay leaderboards 5000 plus micro courses chapter based courses handwritten notes of the teachers with all the inputs so do not miss this opportunity all you have to do as we are going to start the crash courses also from the this month december only so what do you all have to do this is the new logo less is more less surprise more classes you just have to check the link in the description box by pro classes take the link and do not forget to apply the coupon code agepro ag ag ma'am e english channel pro is the course so ag pro will help you to get a discount from 20 to 31 to 43 percent depending upon the course you will choose though i say this one is the best owing to the time that we are left and you just have to pay in a way nine rupees per session due to the course that's you know the price that has decreased too much all right everyone so i hope everything is super duper clear you can follow anubha ma'am with vedantu handle on instagram finally chemistry.vedantu underscore anubha gaur yeah that's so awesome and this is it for today students hope to see you in live classes of vedantu as well this is my email id you can get in touch with me do not forget to like the video share it to your friends and definitely subscribing to this channel which is must for all the upcoming videos thank you so much take care of yourselves and enjoy your learning. Happy learning.